We lost two members of the Maple Leafs family this week on today's episode of the Locked On Leafs podcast show. We remember the lives of Bobby Bond and Rodion Amirov. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Wednesday, August 16th edition of the Locked On Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leaf-centric podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host, Dave Morissuti. Dave, these are uh, they're tough shows to do, right? Uh, sports usually you know, fun and, and a good escape from the real world, but sometimes the real world and, uh, and sports collide, such was the case on Monday when the Maple Leafs uh, family were saddened to hear the news of not one but two. Uh, passings, um, 21-year-old Rodion Amirov and uh, 86-year-old Bobby Bond uh, both passing away on uh, on Monday. And, you know, I think that the Rodion Amirov one, we'll, we'll kind of start there. That one caught a, a lot of people off guard. You know, he'd been battling, um, you know, cancer for, for a long time, a couple of years here. And um, it was unfortunate to uh, to see that news come across the Twitter timeline Monday. Yeah, I was uh, I was like actually almost getting ready to post our our episode on Monday. Yeah, and then I looked at I because I wasn't even looking at social media. I then got a notification from Discord, um, and somebody posted that like the the statement from Dan Milstein, his agent. I had I had to like first just make sure that what I was reading was true, right? Because you kind of get that in the moment there, and that that one hit hits hits hard you know obviously because of his age and you know i guess we just didn't really know how how severe the diagnosis was um i'll i'll just say this from personally like this is this that was a tough one for me to read uh i lost my dad back in 2018 he had a a brain tumor as well so when i saw the initial diagnosis from Mirov, i i prayed that it was not what my dad had which was a malignant brain tumor that one no it's one that you can't get rid of those are like almost guaranteed you're not recovering from those so i prayed hard that that wasn't it uh you know we got the reports that he was you know doing a little bit better he was getting on the ice so that gave me a little bit of hope and then you see the news and that 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 blindsided me a little bit so just really really tough news and that's why we held off you know usually we post on mondays we made the decision saying like it's we have to give it, the, you know, the, the the news a chance to have its have its time. Yeah. It was just a really tough situation. Yeah, we, we ended up pushing the episode of Tuesday and thought, okay, let's let's properly, you know, have uh, a, a conversation and you know have uh, an episode here to uh, to you know talk about the situation um, with Rodion Mirov here today, and and that's what we're doing. And, and then Bobby Bond, of course, also uh, unfortunately, you know, passing as well. Um, but, you know, Mirov, you, you, you mentioned it there, how it, it, it did somewhat come out of the blue just because, you know, I remember hearing, well, I remember him showing up to, was it the, the first day of the season when they were doing the introductions? You know, yeah. he was on the bench. He was there with the team. And I thought that was a really, really cool thing for them to do. Like, obviously, he's fighting um, for his life, you know, and he had been for a couple of years and everybody knew that. Like, hockey came second to what, you know, the battle that he was going through. And I remember being there uh, in person. I thought it was really, really awesome to see Rodion Amirov there with the team and got introduced in front of of Scotiabank Arena. And he got a really warm reception. I I remember um, being there. It's it's super, super unfortunate, um, you know, what happened. You, You could tell that the, uh, the 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 whole Maple Leafs organization was was hurt by by the news. You know, a lot of people came out in, in support. Um, you know, talking about uh, Rodion Amirov had some nice things to say. Uh, I think John Tavares had a you know a really nice post that he made on Twitter. We saw, um, yeah, here it is right here. If you're if you're watching it on YouTube, uh, John Tavares, the captain of the Maple Leafs, said it's incredibly hard to comprehend the loss of Rodion. His smile and joy for life in hockey was infectious. My teammates and I are grateful for our time spent with him and forever inspired by his courageous fight. 
Condolences to his loved ones. We'll miss him dearly. Hashtag Rodeon forever. And, uh, you know, the, the, the smile on his face in this photo, like you couldn't tell that this person had a devastating, you know, diagnosis given to him. Just, yeah. Like, I, I, that was the part two, like, on top of that, when I saw the picture, just remembering that, yeah. I'm just like, I know. And crazy. every time you heard an update on Amirov, it, it seemed to be positive, you know, is he still yeah. fighting and he's feeling good, he's in good spirits, and, and he still, you know, is trying to, uh, to, to, to beat cancer. And, uh, obviously, you know, unfortunately, the, the, was unable to, and, know what happened on monday with him passing at, at a very young age just 21 years old uh a bunch more you know people came out and, and spoke um obviously kyle dubas who drafted rodion amirov back in in 2020 with the 15th pick as a member of the maple leafs uh he came out um you know and said the pittsburgh penguins joined the toronto maple leafs and the entire hockey community in mourning the loss of Rodion Amirov, our thoughts and whole heart are with his parents and family. Uh, their optimism and amazing outlook on life throughout Rodion's battle were unwavering and incredible. Personally, I am so sad for the loss of such a wonderful young man with so much potential. His unabashed positivity, even when he faced with an awful diagnosis, will stay with me forever. Rodion was such an example of courage, and I am certain of that his spirit has touched and will live on in everyone lucky enough to have known him. Kyle Dubas. Uh, so really nice statement there. Also by a former Maple Leafs general manager, the GM who who drafted Rodion Amirov. Um, nice of him to say that. There's also, yeah, the situation. We're just scrolling through, um, you know, the, a really nice piece actually that was written by David Alter. We'll give him a shout out to the Hockey News. Um, there was a game today in the, or the other day in the Continental Hockey League, the KHL, and where, you know, Amirov had grown up through the Russian ranks, obviously, uh, they held a, a moment of silence, um, you know, to, the the parent club did. So that was, you know, nice to see the support there. And I actually forgot about this, but uh, obviously this this Tom uh, Galitti, um reminded us that during Hockey Fights Cancer Month, um, where everybody kind of shows, you know, who they're supporting in their fight uh, against cancer, both Alex Ovechkin and Evgeny Kuznetsov, who, of course, fellow countrymen of Rodion Amirov, uh, both had, you know, Amirov as uh, the player that they were fighting for um, and playing for. That was that photo was taken on in November of, of 2020, uh, 22. So this past November. Um, and obviously Mitch Marner, you know, goes on on Instagram and uh, says that, uh, you know, he'll never be forgotten. Same with Austin Matthews and, and many other teammates, uh, Ilya Samsonov. Um, you know, really, really shaken by it as well, fellow countrymen. Um, so, you know, he clearly touched a, a lot of these people, right? Like, it's it's really unfortunate that that this had to happen. Nick Robertson, um, you know, said unfortunate news, was around Rodion for only a short period of time, but he was a very nice kid and even better player. Thoughts and prayers go out to the Amirov, uh, Amirov's family and friends. Rest in peace, uh, Rodion. So, you know, a lot of teammates coming out in support um heartbroken obviously the fan support all around hockey not just by maple leaf fans also uh you know with with their condolences sent to to his family and you know we obviously here at lockdown lease are, are also extending our condolences to uh to his family as well yeah it's it, it's you know you don't really know uh Really, in these situations, like you know, someone so young like that, you always think about what the family and what they went through, and you know, uh, I, it was really because I, I remember I was reading an interview from the general manager of the KHL team, and he made it seem like you know they're going to try to get him back on the ice again and see yeah. where it goes from there. That's the it, crazy part about all of this, despite yeah. what he was going through, right? Like with brain tumor, fighting cancer, his goal was still to to make it back into hockey and make it to the NHL. Like that was still part of his goal to, to the very last day. And, um, you know, it's, it's really unfortunate that he'll never get to, to realize that and, and, you know, get there. But just the fact that he still to the, to the day he, he died 
you know, that was, that's what he wanted for himself, which is just incredible to, to think mm-hmm. about. It gives you, you know, it's tough when you're dealing with constant treatments and things like that. You need something to kind of keep your, keep your spirits up in some way. And for him, that was hockey. So, um, I, you, I credit him for, you know, continuing to fight, even though it felt like the fight would just, for a lot of people would just not be possible. So, yeah. And, uh, credit to the doctors for doing what they could too, but I'll say this too. Uh, brain cancer is, is a really tough one. Uh, if you know anyone who's dealing with that, the best thing you can do is just do your best to cheer them up in any way, shape or form, help people and also donate to research. Um, I'll post a link where you can donate to brain cancer research. It's one that, uh, they, they're making some advances. Anytime I'm, I, you know, dealing with it personally, I'm always reading about, you know, advances in brain cancer research and, and treatments and just something I think we as a society should be looking to help in any way we can. Yeah. hundred percent. So we'll, we'll post links on, uh, you know, down below in the, in the show notes. And you can, if you've got, you know, spare some spare change, uh, to donate to, to research it, 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 any, every dollar counts, uh, you know, is, is the saying there and it's completely true. Um, unfortunately that wasn't the, the, the last passing that we heard of either on Monday as, uh, you know, former Leafs great Bobby Bond also, uh, his passing was announced Monday evening as well. And, you know, I, I, he was a little older, so I guess it's not that you're expecting someone to pass, but, you know, it wasn't as unexpected. He had been dealing with some, some poor health as well, uh, which was reported after his passing. Um, but Bobby Bond is, is, you know, a member of the, the last team to win a Stanley cup. Uh, he's most known for scoring an, an overtime winner in a Stanley cup final to, to force a game seven with a broken ankle. Uh, Bobby Bond is, is, you know, a legend through and through and, um, you know, our condolences also go out to, to him and his family because uh, that's, uh, you know, an, a, another legend that uh, that passed this week. Yeah. Anytime you hear the name Bobby Bond, everyone always thinks about that overtime goal. That, that's where you build your legacy, <laughs> like a, a player like that. And I, I'm someone of a bit of a, of a hockey, you know, history buff. Uh, you know, we actually when we were in school, we had to do some hot history of sports courses and i just remember bobby bond um being one of those players that tough as nails on the ice uh just kind of had that old hot old time hockey feel to him when he played but i didn't realize until i read about it that like he also was involved with a lot of player disputes or issues off the ice him and ted Lindsay were instrumental in putting up the nhlpa which i think really? every player yeah, every player right now should be thankful of Bobby Bond because, you know, they they didn't just allow and this is at a time where owners were taking advantage of players and what they could pay them and just other ways that other rights that players did not have for the longest time until they did have the union. So that's that's one I think people should re- recognize there, too. And that's another way I think he's really set himself a legacy. And on top of that, you know, he, he, he helped players in court battles. Like he was there helping players who wanted, uh, you know, who wanted the rights that they felt that they deserved. So just another way that Bobby Bond, I think should be remembered on top of the goal that obviously that everyone will remember, but yeah, uh, he had a lot of respect within the hockey community and it's, it's a little sad sometimes when people don't remember those things, but just, just another way that, you know, you can set yourself aside you know, as like a true, they call him like a pioneer, one of those pioneers because of the work he did yeah. off the ice. I actually think he used to like run a Tim Hortons too. Huh. Like this, like these guys, you think about it, the guys in the sixties didn't get paid a lot, right? Like yeah, they, all right. Had to work. they all had to work extra jobs. You know, I think he was an investor in a, in a Tim Hortons. He did some, uh, some work at a car, car, car sales, um and things like that so yeah he um very interesting there's a lot of good nice interviews of him uh he had obviously a long life 86 years old that like god bless him he was able to live a full life yeah. i think he had cancer too at one point in his life as well so yeah bobby bond just another one of those like names i think will forever 
be remembered with the Leafs. And uh, yeah, I mean, the goal will be first, but I also remember all those other things afterwards. Yeah. And, you know, throughout his career, he won the last four Stanley Cups for the Toronto Maple Leafs in 1962, 1963, 1964, and 64 is also when he had the the goal. And then uh, 1967, and haven't won one since. Uh, so um, Bobby Bond, as you know, 86 years old, um, you know, was was one of the uh, few guys still still living, I guess, who were part of that 1967 championship team. Uh, he had 14 seasons spent with the Maple Leafs, 29 goals, 140 assists, uh, over a thousand pims and 739 games. Um, what I didn't realize, like you talk about him being tough as nails and that's kind of what I remember him being, you know, spoken about, like he's not our generation, but we've heard him talk, like people talk about Bobby Bond, you know, your uncles, your grandfather. Father. Like they tell you the stories of Bobby Bond and the type of player he was and how hard nosed he was. It's only five nine, 170 pounds is what he was listed on uh, on Hockey Reference. So I'm like five nine, an undersized defenseman who uh, who is just tough as nails. And um, you know, obviously, our uh, condolences to, um, to 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 the Bond family. I think, you know, one other thing, if you want to talk about the goal a little bit here, just to educate those who might not know a lot about it. We, like, have, we, we have the goal, right? We, we want to, we want to show do, I do have the video. So maybe we'll show it first and I'll explain some things I read about it um, that were just. So just to give a little background of what happened in the play, he took a, a shot from Gordy Howe. Gordy Howe, who had a howitzer of a shot. This was no... Uh, these, these That's how they got the name Howitzer. It's from Gordy Howe. Yeah, exactly. So he takes it just above the ankle, and he can't get up. Like, like he had to be helped off the ice, which is this is the part of the clip you're going to start seeing, and you'll see the rest of it here. They're lifting Vaughn up there on that stretcher. Hard to say which leg it is or whether it's a shoulder. <laughs> Take him off the ice. Like an hour, two hours later, this guy went on to score. A this big crowd of over 15,000. You can see them standing up and giving him a hand as they carry him off. They recognize a fellow that gives such tremendous service. And we're on the face off. Out to Carl Brewer. A long backhand is wide. Langwash shifts it off the boards. Bob Bond lets it drive to go. Score! Bob Bond, let it go. It bounced and fun and went into the net. And it's all over. And the series is tied. And they'll play the summons game Saturday night in Toronto. Bob, now on your injury, what happened, first of all, to you, and how did it happen? I blocked a shot in front of the net uh, during the killing the penalty. And... Uh, it was numb then, and I, I couldn't figure out what was wrong. And then when I went into the face-off with Gordy Howe, I just heard a, a snap, and it caved in underneath me. And I tried to get up, and uh, there's no way I could put any weight on it. So uh, that was the story then, and uh, they fro froze my uh, leg then. And uh, it, it's all right right now, of course. I can't feel it. <laughs> he did that right he he did that right after scoring, like not long after scoring. You couldn't tell this guy had broken his ankle. Like it was actually right, like the fibula is what fractured. That didn't look like a guy who was dealing with that sort of injury. It looked like he got, like he was legitimately carried off the ice, like as if he had legitimately been shot. I mean, yeah, he was just like kind of dang, like he was he wasn't moving when he was carried stretchered off the ice there. And then he comes back like an hour and a half later, shot up the the ankle, and he was good to go. Went out there, scored the the game winning goal in overtime to to force a game seven, in which they eventually went on to uh, to win that game four nothing, and you know won a Stanley Cup at that year, nineteen sixty four. Um, might not have happened if Bobby Bond didn't return to the game. You know, if Detroit scores, you know during that game, if if Bobby Bond doesn't. Well, that's a Stanley Cup uh, in Detroit's barn instead of in Toronto's uh, cabinet. So, yeah, Bobby Bond, that 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 is what he will 
mostly be remembered for and, and for obvious reasons. That's just one of the, the greatest hockey stories of all time. Like they, they share stories of like due to, you know, do these incredible, amazing things, guys who play with, with, you know, ruptured, ball sacks and wasn't there a guy actually this uh he got like 55 stitches or something like that in the middle of a game in the playoffs this year he's playing for the jets um, it was a baron a baron mm -hmm. for the jets to get skate to the face or something like that and he had like uh, Morgan Barron. he needs 75 stitches 75 stitches and then came back uh, out i think he got the first got 55 then they had to do more stitches he got 75 stitches altogether <laughs> And he came back to play the game the same night. You know, it's it's he didn't score a Stanley Cup, uh, you know, OT game winning goal after that. But it's still like in that ilk of you, you, when you talk about dudes and how tough they are and how hockey players are different animals and, and different breeds. Like that's one of those stories. The guy had a broken leg, a broken leg, and he went out there and scored an overtime winner in a Stanley Cup final to force a game seven. Like that's just unbelievable stuff right there and that was bobby bond in a nutshell man can't keep that guy off the ice he, he, he loved the game loved the game that much put his body on the line and uh yeah it's just outstanding outstanding stuff hey go and read i was reading a good story by kevin mcgrann in the toronto star and he said that his he had such a high tolerance for pain he was playing with a broken neck for five years and did not even know it how? How? I, <laughs> yeah, I played five years with a broken net and didn't know it. Like, what? <laughs> how do you do? How do that seems normal. It's like, yeah, you know. So I guess after stiff. five years, it, it kind of feels normal, right? Like I yeah. had something, that, you know. I guess it does feel normal because you just get used to it. But that's insane. Absolutely insane, man. Like uh, to think it, though, like, after all that. And, and still be able to live a, a full life to 86 years old. Uh, I, I'm sure he, you know, he, he probably doesn't have many regrets um, in life, you know, just, just based on how he played the, the game. If he played life that way, going, you know, give it 110% in everything he did. I'm sure he, uh, he would tell you that he's probably, probably happy with, with how things turned out. Uh, yeah, I would think know. so. Yeah, it, it's just you know I know P, I know sometimes players nowadays get a bad rap because of what players back in the in the day would go through. I think if you had some of these older players, they wouldn't want to go through half of those things that they went through. It's just the way that they were built. Dude, won a ring, man! Like literally went on to win a ring in the very next game. So mm. yeah, I'm sure it was worth it. If he asked him, "Would you do it again?" I'll bet you a hundred bucks. He says, "You betcha." You yeah. bet I will. You know, and, and you hear now so players who are designed to you know to end their careers because injuries have taken the toll. Like David Krejci just retired. Yeah. Like kind of expecting to hear that retirement. And he kind of well, said that injuries played a big part of it. Gabe Landeskog's in a situation right now, too, where you know, if his knee he had his what second knee surgery, reconstruction surgery, if if it doesn't take here, it's probably not great for, for his career. But yeah, it uh I mean he like he broke broken tibula and an hour later goes back out there and uh, or fibula he goes out there and scores a game winner to force a game seven. It's just stuff that you couldn't even write up in a in a novel, man. It's no, awesome. Not at all. Yeah. So uh Bobby Bond. A lot of, lot of Leaf fans in the 60s have uh, some great, great memories of Bobby Bond. You know, your grandfather and and, and your older uncles and your, and your dad, um, you know, probably have a place in their heart for, for what Bobby Bond did for the Maple Leafs. I mean, 14 years that guy was a part of this organization. Like, he's, he's a fan favorite. And uh, it's it's sad to see him go. You know, sad to see him go, for sure. Him and, and Rodion Amirov, who... Very clearly a, a completely different circumstance, gone way too soon at just uh, 21 years old. Didn't, didn't, didn't get to, to experience what it's like to, you know, represent the, the Maple Leafs here in Toronto um, on the ice at least. But um, that's, it's, it's really unfortunate news, the, the both of them. So uh, on behalf of us here at Lockdown Leafs, 
Um, we'd like to extend our condolences to both the Bon and uh, and the Amirov families. Uh, and with that, Dave, I think we'll just kind of close out for uh, for today's show. Um, I'd like to thank you all for listening and, and supporting the show. You can subscribe to uh, the Locked On These podcasts on all podcast platforms, also up on, on YouTube. Uh, receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself uh, on X. I guess we got to start calling it X at some point. X platform or X. Yeah. The X platform formerly known as Twitter is now the style guide for any journalists out there. Oh, okay. Did you get an email about that? Yeah, style guide updates. Love them. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, at Mickey underscore Canuck is mine. At D underscore Morisuti is uh, is Dave's. And uh, at Lockdown Leaves is, is where you can find the show. And um, yeah, I, again, Dave, what you were talking about earlier, we're going to post uh, you know, some, some places that you can donate to down below uh, for brain cancer. And um, you know, it'd be, it'd be great if you could donate just a couple of bucks if, if you have it. Uh, it, it really could go a long way. Uh, we'll be back with another episode for you guys on Friday. It'll be Fan Friday. So uh, if you're interested in, in being a Fan Friday, uh, reach out to us either on uh, Twitter, Instagram, or X, formerly known as Twitter, uh, Instagram, uh, the Lockdown Leafs account, or also uh, in, in the Discord, in which uh, I saw somebody actually reach out to us asking for the discord channel they're interested in the uh, hockey yeah. I remember put that out there yeah so we'll have to put that in the show notes uh, as well um so you can go and find uh, all that there so we're back in the episode for you guys on friday but until then keep locked right here on lockdown leaves